Hey engineering students, this is a video on how to create parametric um, equations in Onshape. So it's a little bit different in every 3D modeling software. So this is how Onshape likes to work it. Uh, so before you ever start a sketch, that's where we want to create some variables. Our goal is to be able to build a pair cam based on something called a nominal diameter. So we just set this nominal number um, it doesn't mean that it's actually the diameter of necessarily any circle or any um, part of the picture, but it is just a variable that we're basing our measurements on. So in Onshape, um, so locating it can be kind of tricky. So mine's underneath this drop down next to this plane. Um, so what we're looking for is the X variable. So go ahead and click on that and we're going to type in nominal diameter. You can type whatever you want. You can shorten it. You could type ND. You can give it whatever name you want. Um, for this one, let's just set the value at two and a half. You could set this at whatever you want. Hit enter a couple times and it shows up right over here in the browser bar. Uh, because we recently used it, now it's just sitting right on our toolbar. So go ahead and click on it again. Uh, and this time, let's uh, call this the axle diameter. Um, so this is the hole that's going through the cam itself. So let's say you have different sized axles. Um, so let's go ahead and set that at one fourth. You can type in one divided by four, you can type in 0.25, however that works for you. So it shows up here as well. Uh, last parameter that we might need, um, let's go ahead and click that variable again. This time let's call it thickness. Uh, we'll give that one fourth as well uh, so that when we extrude, um, we can quickly change the extrusion thickness uh, without having to go through too much, um, too many steps. All right. So just like we did previously, we still need to build the pair cam. Uh, so let's go ahead and start a sketch on that front plane. Uh, swipe this thing around and let's go ahead and start a circle based on the origin as the center. And now when we go to dimension, by either clicking on dimension or clicking uh, the letter D, uh, now instead of typing in a number here, uh, go ahead and type the number symbol, so that's shift three, and up pops all of our possible uh, variables that we have to choose from. Um, so the nominal diameter is exactly two and a half. Uh, so if we go back to look at our pair cam here, um, whoop, there we go, uh, this bottom circle has a radius of the nominal diameter divided by two. Well, that means that the actual diameter is the nominal diameter. Um, so let's go ahead and click on nominal diameter um, and press enter. So it shows that, hey, this diameter is two and a half. However, it's being run from our variable. Uh, let's see, we've got one more circle to add in. So go ahead and attach it right to the top. Um, and this circle at the top has a radius of d divided by 8, or an eighth of the nominal diameter. Well, that means that the actual diameter of that circle is twice that size. So it would be d divided by 4, only a fourth of the nominal diameter. So when we go to dimension this one, uh, start by typing the number symbol again, click on nominal diameter, and then type divide by 4. So that resizes it okay, without having to do any calculations on our end. Okay, resize it there. Now finish the rest of the pair cam by adding in the individual lines that go from the top circle to the bottom circle in both places. And um, click on your constraints uh, to choose the tangent constraint. I obviously used it pretty recently. Um, so go ahead and make those lines tangent to each of the two circles. Sometimes things don't necessarily move because it auto, um, auto attached where it was tangent already. All right, so that's in there. I do like to trim things up a little bit. Um, if it doesn't give you any errors, go ahead and trim off um, the big circle piece as well. And so here is our little bulbous uh, pair cam. We still need to add in that circle at the center, um, the hole, uh, and that is just the axle diameter that we um, decided on. So go ahead and uh, create that circle, dimension that one, and this time, um, we use the number symbol and it is the axle diameter and press enter. So resize there. 
go ahead and finish the sketch and we're ready to extrude. So when we click on our surface, it's everything except the hole, obviously. And then for the depth, type the number symbol again, and this time uh, we want it to be the thickness that we gave it. Uh, so go ahead and enter a couple of times. If you rotate this thing around, we can see, yep, we have ourselves a quarter inch thick cam uh, with the quarter inch diameter axle hole in the center. Um, and so you might be wondering, okay, well, what's the use of this? Well, if you want to change, let's say, the thickness of the extrusion, just double click on the thickness and say, hey, I want this to be one inch thick. And it automatically updates. Okay? You don't have to change anything. If you want the nominal diameter to be bigger, click on the variable, make it bigger. Okay? You can change anything you want and it will automatically update very easily. So that is the power behind using parametric or variable equations uh, when building. So our goal beyond this is to then create all of these six cams, one is already done, create the rest of these cams based on these equations so that we can set it to be whatever size we want.